All right, so the goal of this part is to get Laravel WebSockets installed, configured, so we can open up the Laravel WebSockets dashboard and connect to our server. So uh, I've left the links for the Laravel WebSockets GitHub page here, but all of the documentation for this is over on the Beyond Code uh, website. So let's run through this together. First things first, let's head over to the installation section here, and we wanna go ahead and pull down the package. So let's just paste this in in a new tab. I've still got the web server uh, running locally just over here as well. So let's head back over to the docs. Once that's finished, we wanna go ahead and generate the migration. We'll talk about what that is in just a second, uh, but once this is finished, we'll paste that in and get this table created in our database. Okay, so that's just about done. Let's go ahead and paste that command in. And of course, the next thing we want to do is migrate the changes. So let's go and do that as well. So if we head over to our database real quick, this has got the WebSocket statistic, uh, statistics entries table. Now, when we connect to our dashboard, what this will do is it will give us lots of information about connections to our WebSocket server. And it will also give us information about our events as well, events that have been broadcast and pushed through to the server. And they will just be stored in this database table. So this is uh, something that just holds all of that information. We don't need to come into this directly. That's purely just to serve that dashboard. So really importantly, let's go ahead and publish the WebSocket configuration file. So let's do that as well. And let's just dive straight into that and just see what this gives us. So let's come over to websockets.php here. So you can see here that we've got some dashboard configuration. So the port that this uh, by default connects to. Uh, we've got this apps, which is really important. So the pusher app ID, app name, app key, we'll be talking about uh, getting the pusher replacement set up here in just a sec. And we've got loads of other configuration in here as well. So a list of allowed origins, max request size. You can kind of look through this and see if it's useful for you. Uh, but most of this we don't need to touch to get the basic stuff set up. So uh, it's really easy to just get this working. OK, so that's pretty much it in terms of the installation. What we're looking at, though, is the pusher replacement for this. So if we head over to the pusher replacement section just here, uh, within Laravel by default, if we head over to .emv, we've got the broadcast driver here set to log. If we just open up the broadcasting configuration, you can see that we get an option between pusher, redis, log, and null. Log will just log these out, of course, uh, the name implies that. Null will just do nothing with it. Redis is if you want to broadcast real-time events through Redis. And Pusher is if you want to use the third-party service, Pusher. You may have already heard that of that before. Now, the great thing about Laravel WebSockets is it provides a Pusher replacement. The WebSocket server uses exactly the same API as Pusher as in the third-party service, which means that we can still use all of that great functionality but locally, and we don't have to worry about paying for a third party service or using a third party service. But the even better thing about this is if later you want to scale this a little bit further and you do want to pay for pusher, you don't need to change much configuration around. You just get rid of a couple of configuration options and you can go and still use that third party service. You don't need to change uh, around how this works. So what we want to do then is change this over to Pusher. So let's go over to EMV and switch this over to Pusher. And if we scroll down a little bit in here, you've got the Pusher app ID, app key and app secret. So what I'm going to do is just set all these to local because we don't really have an app key and app secret from the third party service Pusher because we are just working locally here. OK, so now that's done, let's go and make sure we pull in the Pusher PHP server, which is required for this to work. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that in. And we've already done this step here, so we can kind of skip this one here. Now, the next thing that's really important is the Pusher configuration. Now, what we want to do is change around some of the options inside of our default broadcasting, because if we just take a look at it at the moment, this just has the cluster, which is irrelevant in the sense that we're using just a single uh, WebSocket server locally. Uh, use TLS we can set to true if we want to, but we want to change this around because the host that we are using is local. The host by default will connect to Pusher, but we want this to be local. We also want to change around the port and the scheme as well. So we're just going to grab these three options here, and I'm just going to go ahead and paste these in, and we can get rid of use TLS if we want to. We don't really need that in there for now. So that is our pusher configuration setup for our local WebSocket server, which mimics pusher. 
And to be honest, we are pretty much done. The only other thing that I do at this point is head over to config and app and I make sure that I remember to enable the broadcast service provider. That's not required for Laravel WebSockets, but it will be required in the next part when we go and fire an event. We'll need that in there. Okay, so now that we have configured this successfully, well, hopefully successfully, we can head over to our app and we can go over to the Laravel WebSockets dashboard. Now, this won't actually work at the moment uh, because we haven't restarted our local server and our environment variables haven't come into effect. So I'm going to close this off and rerun PHP Artisan Serve. Let's give that a refresh and we should be presented with our dashboard. Now, if I try and connect to this at the moment, you can see nothing happens. If you want to debug this, so if something does go wrong, you can just open up the console, the network tab, filter this by WebSockets and see what's going on here. But if we connect, you can see that we get an error connection refused. That is purely because we have not set up or started our WebSocket server. So I have another tab open here, which we used earlier. We can use this to run our WebSocket server. And all we need to do in this case is just run WebSocket and serve. That's going to go ahead and start that WebSocket server for us, that pusher replacement server on port 6001. So you can see here that we can choose the app. The reason that we can choose the app is you can actually set this up for multi-tenancy. So if you wanted to, you could have multiple uh, uh, channels or if you like, or multiple servers running for different apps. It's not really multiple servers, but this will categorize different apps for you. But we're just looking at single tenancy for now. So now that I've started that WebSocket server, I can hit connect and you should, if we just head over to the network tab, see a WebSocket connection with the status 101 switching protocols which basically means it's connected and it's listening. And you can see here that we have a couple of events being pulled through as well. And that is what that table is for that we looked at earlier. When we start to see things roll in to this dashboard, they will be stored in there for later viewing. So if you're at this point now, you have successfully installed and configured the Laravel WebSockets package. And we can move on to the next part, which is firing an event. And we'll hopefully start to see these roll into this dashboard.